The House of Squibb presents the finest in motion picture entertainment, Academy Award. The House of Squibb, manufacturing chemist to the medical profession since 1858, bring you Academy Award. The pictures, the players, the techniques and skills which have won or been nominated for the coveted awards granted each year by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to each in his field for outstanding achievement. Each week, Squib on the Air brings you only the finest performances. Squib in your home brings you only the finest medicinal products, pure, effective, reliable. Squib, a name you can trust. Tonight's picture is the story of Louis Pasteur. Tonight's star is the distinguished motion picture actor, Mr. Paul Muni. The story of Louis Pasteur was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. And our producer-director is D. Engelbach. Academy Award, starring Paul Muni in his 1936 Academy Award winning role of Louis Pasteur. Come, come, Pasteur. Tell us precisely what you mean. Your Majesty, the hospitals of Paris are pest houses. There's scarcely a doctor in the city who's not carrying death on his hands and instruments. So... And what does the learned court physician, Dr. Charbonnet, think of that? I think, Your Majesty, that Monsieur Pasteur must blame his microbes. You see, he possesses a private menagerie of invisible beasts. Exactly. Dr. Charbonnet could see them for himself if he took the trouble to use his microscope. He would watch them multiply into murderous millions. They breed in filth. They must start from the gutters in Paris tonight and by tomorrow claim some other... From this very court. Preposterous. You, Charbonnet, treated a court servant today. She died tonight, a victim of your bigotry. Moreover, the unclean midwife who attended her will attend your next more illustrious patient and may bring death to the Countess Gabrielle de Villefort. <laughs> Stop! I forbid any more. You have gone too far, Monsieur Pasteur. The Countess Gabrielle de Villefort is Her Majesty's sister. Your Majesty, I speak only in warning. Pasteur, is it not true that you're practicing medicine of a kind when it is known that you're only a chemist? And is it not true that you are the author of a pamphlet that has caused the death of a famous physician? I'm not practicing medicine, Dr. Rossignol. I'm trying to put a stop to the negligence of those who do. Pasteur, in your processes for improving our wines and beer... You have rendered France a great service. We appreciate it. In the future, you will confine yourself to that field, to your uh, pasteurizations. It is my wish. No, it is my command. Now, Monsieur Pasteur, have you anything to say? It is my birthday, sire. I can only hope that God will spare me the years until these learned doctors know and understand the vicious and invisible world of the microbes as I have learned to know and fear them. Your Majesty, the Countess de Villefort... Yes, Dr. Chabonnet. She... Your Majesty, she... she is dead. My sister... My sister. It is the hand of God, Your Majesty. But, Monsieur, if Pasteur had been here... Pasteur, Your Majesty, is not a doctor. Even so, Monsieur, I did not agree with the Emperor. I believed in Pasteur. And had he not been banished, he might have... He might have saved my sister. Aranette plays very well. 
I forget that the years speed swiftly. She has grown to womanhood. Yes. The years of my banishment go so fast, and there is so much to be done. Louis, does her playing disturb you? No, on the contrary, my dear. I'm only writing a letter, a letter to Dr. Lister of Edinburgh. Oh. The war with the Prussians is over. While men have been fighting each other, I have been fighting microbes, for they are the real enemies of mankind. I've discovered a new serum, a serum against anthrax, the dread disease in cattle. Tests are not yet conclusive, but I... <laughs> In addition to forfeiting Alsace-Lorraine, we have to pay an immediate indemnity of five billion francs. The question is how to raise such a sum. Monsieur President, industry is at a standstill. Farms are neglected. A devastating plague destroys our cattle. Efforts to raise money have failed everywhere except in one small province, Arbois. But if Arbois can pay, why not the others? For some reason, their cattle haven't been affected by this plague, this disease the doctors call anthrax. Then what is the reason? Every animal saved will buy back some Frenchman's liberty and self-respect. Perhaps Dr. Charbonnet or Dr. Rosenol can tell us. We believe it is the fields of this province. They must be immune to the disease. We would suggest that cattle from the other provinces be driven to Arbois. They are to feed upon the good pastures and be kept in healthful condition. Let it be done at once. But I heard that some person in that province had developed a serum of sorts that keeps the cattle healthy. Impossible, sir. A maddened chemist called Pasteur once blamed all disease on microbes. <laughs> we French are a very imaginative race. <laughs> Monsieur, this animal is immune. How many days since we injected it with the serum? Six days. S six days. And four days, according to the records here, that you injected with the anthrax germs. Our serum works. Monsieur, have you read the paper from Paris? No, ah, no, I have no time for newspapers to rule. It says the government has heard that the cattle of Arbois are immune to anthrax, and they recommend that all cattle be shipped here. <laughs> Nonsense. A journalist's pipe dream. Who would be so idiotic as to do that? Monsieur, they have come. Half the cattle and sheep of France are being driven here. Fools! Idiots! Every inch of this ground is contaminated. It is only my vaccine which has kept our cattle healthy. <laughs> Say no! No, you must turn! Turn back, turn about! Drive these cattle away from these fields, it is death! Death, I tell you! Please stand aside, monsieur. These cattle have been ordered here by the government. Please, monsieur Pasteur. They will not listen to you. There is nothing more we can do. Do? There is something we can do. I shall appeal to the Academy of Medicine. <laughs> I say Pasteur is right. He's wrong. Wrong. No, 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 no. Of wrong. Gentlemen, Pasteur was discovered to be a charlatan ten years ago. I see no reason for accepting him now. I disagree, Dr. Charbonnet. If someone has a cure for anthrax, I want to know about it. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Dr. Rossignol, I have something to propose. Let us take 50 normal, healthy sheep, 25 of which will be vaccinated by Monsieur Pasteur. The others will remain as they are. I shall then infect all 50 sheep with anthrax by injecting them with the dark, poisonous blood of diseased sheep. And I defy any man or any vaccine to save one of them. Bravo! Bravo! He wouldn't dare. I know the man. Doctor, can you answer for Monsieur Pasteur? I, uh, I hardly know what to say, gentlemen. Pasteur has gone. He is not here. Well, it's just as well. He wouldn't dare accept... Gentlemen, I am Pastor. I accept the challenge. Louis, why 
why don't you try and get some sleep? I should have stayed with the sheep. I shouldn't have left them. But you said it was against the rules to rules, go near them. Rules, rules. Do you realize what this means, this experiment? Tomorrow, if you're successful, every farmer in Europe will want your vaccine. You won't have a moment's peace. My dear, the benefits of science are not for scientists. They're for humanity. Before continuing with the second part of Paul Muni's Academy Award winning performance of the story of Louis Pasteur, I'd like to tell you about an exciting evening I had last week. I was attending a preview of Warner Brothers' new picture, Devotion, starring Ida Lupino, Paul Henry, and Olivia de Havilland. With the crowd milling around and the photographers jockeying for position, the commotion was terrific. Hold it, please, Miss Lupino. Can I get one more? Thank you. You're a lucky guy having these pretty girls smile at you all the time. <laughs> That's my business, making them smile. Well, you know, it's my business, too. After all, there's nothing like squib dental cream for bringing out an attractive smile. Smiles don't have to be coaxed when your mouth feels pleasantly wide awake, cool, clean, and fresh. And that's just how your mouth does feel when you use Squib Dental Cream. The zestful, minty flavor of Squib Dental Cream is so refreshing, it brings to your whole mouth an exhilarating tingle. And getting back to smiles, pure Squib Dental Cream really helps you to keep all that natural brilliance you prize so highly. It helps to bring out all the sparkling beauty any smile can have. For the active ingredient of Squib Dental Cream is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective polishing agents known to dental science. Hey, no wonder you're so enthusiastic. Oh, but look, I've got to take three more pictures. Okay, good luck. And you're sure to have it if your subjects use safe, pure, pleasant Squib Dental Cream. You can see the difference. Yes, you can taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference when you use Squib Dental Cream. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. <laughs> And now for part two of tonight's picture, the story of Louis Pasteur, starring the Academy Award winner, Mr. Paul Muni. Hardly had a sleepless night ended when dawn found me rushing to the field where the sheep were penned, and as I rushed, I saw a country Punch and Judy show playing its puppets to the crowd. When I could get through to the sheep... The sight which first greeted me made my heart sink. Louis, what is the matter? My sheep. My sheep, dead, everyone. Oh. I failed. Failed. But are you sure? Perhaps these are the sheep of Monsieur Rossignol. No, no, I counted these. I counted his. They're, they're dead, too. I don't understand... Come, let's get away from the crowd before they discover me. I'll not stand being laughed at. Louis! Louis, wait! No, I'll not wait. Louis, turn around. Look. The dead walk. Hmm? One of your sheep has risen. Now another. <laughs> My dear, they were only tired. Not dead, but asleep. Asleep? Thank God. Uh, Monsieur Pasteur. I congratulate you. You have done an amazing thing. Your sheep live. Mine are dead. I... I don't need more proof than that that I've been a fool. Your hand, monsieur. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, have you... Have you met Dr. Lister of Edinburgh? Imagine the great Lister coming all the way to see you. We meet at last, sir. And I fancy myself a promise today. The name of Pasteur takes its place among the great names of science. No, no, not with yours, dear Dr. Lister. No name ranks with yours in the history of great discovery. Let history judge that, sir. History is being made right here in this field. This crowd has come here. Let them be aware of it. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? And you, Dr. Charbonnet, I imagine at last you found yourself a convert to pastorism? No, Lister, I don't. I do not regard these carnival performances as conclusive. What will be upon the future of creative medicine? It marks a definite turning point in the world of science. Why are they laughing, my dear pastor? Why not? Look at the crowd. 
It's back, it's to us. They cheer the happy conclusion of the Punch and Judy show. Charbonnet's quite right. <laughs> I haven't even heard what Rossignol is saying. Pasteur, my friend, they don't understand. Yes, yes, they understand. But science, of course, cannot compete with the Punch and Judy show. Dog, the irony of it at a time like this. They'll bring the blacksmith to burn her wound. If she'll not die from the rabies, she may from the shock of the burning iron. And yet all the doctors of Europe can do no more. And we stand here and worry about our fame. That's the irony, sir. Why should that woman die? Gentlemen, must we continue to allow the prattle of a mad theorist to undo the work of centuries and make a laughing stock of the entire medical profession? You have all read this article. Mr. President, I have seen Pasteur produce rabies in healthy animals by injecting them with a fluid taken from the mouth of a mad dog. Have you seen its germs? Not yet, no. Of course you haven't. There is no such thing. Pasteur imposes upon the public with his hallucinations. What about his vaccine for anthrax? That is no theory, that is a fact. It not only elected him to this academy, it saved our farmers enough money to pay for the entire war. Gentlemen, I am a Russian. My country sent me to investigate Pastor's efforts. His fame is known to our peasants who for centuries have been preyed upon by rabid wolves. If Pastor is unwilling to come to us, I say, let us go to Pasteur. Yes, yes, we will go and expose once and for all this quack, this imposter. Monsieur Pasteur, in your last paper to us at the Academy, you said you were on the threshold of a vast new world. Might we inquire if you've crossed that threshold? Oh, good question, Charbonnet. After all, Pasteur, the Academy has come to you. Gentlemen, science takes a step, then another, then it stops and reflects before taking a third. A mother takes a nursing child, puts him down. The child takes its first step, then stops unsteadily. Would the mother be right to say to him, you are hesitating, you will never walk? You do not believe me. In this little test tube now in my hand, there are enough death-dealing rabies germs to wipe out a city. Really? Allow me. Careful, Charbonnet. No, oh, it smells dreadful. I implore you. Why? If you have the slightest scratch on your hand. Oh, I see. Well, I do have something of a scratch. A cut from a nail as I entered your laboratory here. So now we shall see, eh? I'll pour a bit of your virus powder into my wound. There now. All I want is to have you predict the hour of my death. All the dogs that were infected by the contents of that test tube died. Except Charbonnet. It's been a month since he's been infected. I just don't understand. But maybe that tube you had was left to stand too long. Eh? Stand too long? Yes. Wait. Perhaps. Roux! Roux! Yes, monsieur? How old was that dried tissue when Charbonnet rubbed it into his wound? Fourteen days. Fourteen Suppose we started with an old virus that's no longer deadly. Suppose we inject it into a healthy animal and day by day, as nature builds up his resistance, we increase the doses with stronger, fresher samples until he's able to withstand the actual disease. Would he not then be immune? Oh, Louis. Oh! How many dogs have we left? Ten healthy ones, 
They've never been exposed. Give them hydrophobia. But, monsieur... Give them hydrophobia. Louis, a doctor to see you. For me? Doctor? Monsieur, we have come from Alsace. This little boy was bitten. I've done all I could, but that isn't very much. But you can help him. Well, how long has it been? Eleven days. The dog was rabid. I made the test. Make, take the boy and put him to bed. You will save him. Don't misunderstand me. My treatment has saved dogs. Ten of them. But I haven't the faintest notion what effect it would have upon a human being. If... If I failed... It would mean prison, Louis. Perhaps the guillotine. <laughs> Monsieur Pasteur, you are not a doctor. You cannot expect support from the medical profession. I implore you to attempt nothing yes, irregular. Yes, yes, I know, I know. The boy will die anyway. It is worth trying. Anything, anything. Human life is at stake. Yet, they would crucify me if I fail. Oh, monsieur, I beg of you, save my boy, my boy. Should I do it? Should I? A child's life is at stake, and I ask if I should? I must! Louis, what are you doing? Louis, you go to jail, to the guillotine. Shh! Don't talk. He's asleep. Yes, child? You're awake? I'm... I'm hungry. You're... You're hungry. You're well. He's well. Pasteur! Pasteur! What is it? The boy. Look, he lives. He is over the crisis. The serum works. Come, we must tell him at once. Louis! Louis, wake up, Louis! Louis, you've won. The serum is successful. The boy lives. He cries out for food. Louis! Louis, wake up! Louis! Dr. Charbonnet, you must come at once. My husband has been stricken. Me? You ask me to wait upon him? But I... We're... No, Dr. Charbonnet. My husband has faith in you. He respects your ability. Madame, I have opposed him. I have been his enemy. No, Dr. Charbonnet. The only enemy my husband has is disease. Madame... I thank you for that. I'll call my carriage. We'll leave at once. Louis. Louis, are you awake? My, my side. I can feel nothing. You've been unconscious. The master boy. I've got to get up and see him. No, Louis, no. Yesterday they dressed him and took him home. He is entirely well. Good. Good. The doctor is here. Please, come in, doctor. Well, Pester, how are you feeling? Charbonnet. What does it mean? It means that I'm your physician. That you must remain quiet for a few days. Charbonnet. I... I appreciate this. Oh, it's not for you to appreciate me. It's for me to join the legion of those who appreciate you and your genius. Ah, oh, monsieur, you've triumphed again. I have come to treat a patient who has been my teacher. Dr. Chabonnet. Madame, how is he? Oh, he seems well enough, but listless. He doesn't seem to care to have an interest to fight. Oh, I'll have a talk with him. We have something that might interest him, eh? Will you follow my lead? Oh, yes, doctor, of course. Good morning, monsieur. You're looking better. Good morning, Dr. Charbonnet. I'm afraid I don't feel better. I feel tired and old. Oh, 
I'd rather hope that you'd be feeling your old self again, particularly today. Why, today? Well, I would relish seeing the old Pasteur in action. Action? What do you mean? Well, Dr. Rue just told me when I arrived that some foreign scientist is giving a lecture at the Sorbonne this afternoon. He claims he will disprove your entire germ theory. What? Marie! Is that right? Yes, Louis. Who is that man? What's his name? We don't know. But, of course, you're too tired. Tired? Nothing. Order the carriage, bring me my clothes, we'll go there at once. You're just in time. They've arranged for you to sit on the platform. Courage, my dear. I'll be listening. Whom are they applauding? It's Dr. Lister of Scotland. Lister? Lister to speak against me? This way, sir. They, they're waiting for you. President of France is here, and Lister, you? Sir Pasteur, we greet you in the name of humanity. Monsieur, mankind is waiting. Charbonnet. They'll all come. Look up, my friend. Look up into the gallery. The medical students. The youth to pay you homage. I... I have no words as to express. You... You young men in the gallery. You... Doctors and scientists of the future, do not let yourselves be tainted by a barren skepticism nor discouraged by the sadness of certain hours that creep over nations. Do not become angry at your opponents, for no scientific theory has ever been accepted without opposition. Live in the serene peace of libraries and laboratories. Say to yourselves first, what have I done for my instructions? What am I accomplishing? Until the time comes when you may have the immense happiness of thinking that you have contributed in some way to the welfare and progress of mankind. Out here in Hollywood, getting stars autographs is a major occupation. Way back when Abraham Lincoln was president, Dr. Squibb first signed his name on a container of ether. That name, his autograph, was his pledge that the ether he himself had produced was safe, pure, and effective. His own burning quest for perfection had resulted in something unheard of up to that time, a drug of unquestioned purity and uniformity. But for Dr. Squibb, ether was only the beginning. He began to produce other essential drugs with the same hitherto unheard of insistence on perfection. And doctors came to insist on using products that bore the signature Edward R. Squibb. And the house of Squibb began to grow. Others came to work with Dr. Squibb to share his wholehearted devotion to the cause of human health and to carry on down through the years the work he began. That's why today the name Squibb is still a pledge, a kind of composite signature or autograph of the thousands who work so faithfully to maintain the original Squibb standard of perfection, to keep Squibb a name you can trust. Next week, Academy Award, starring Brian Donlevy and the Great McGinty. Mr. Paul Muni has just completed the Charles R. Rogers production, Angel on My Shoulder, a United Artists release. This is Hugh Brandage bidding you good night until next week at the same time when the House of Squibb invites you to join us for Academy Award. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.